What's up top 10 fam, hope you're having an awesome day, I'm your host Eamon Hassan and welcome back to another video. So I thought I could start this video off with an acapella version of the song that I've prepared for you guys. It's a pretty well known song, you know, top 40s, all that, and I think when you hear it you guys will probably know what video we're about to do straight away. Here I go. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Sorry, I just have to tune my voice a bit, you know, there's some pretty high notes I have to hit right now. Can you just dim the lights guys, just give me some stage presence. Here I go. <clears throat> Ba 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 na na Ba 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 na na Potato na Ba na na Okay, I'm done, I can't do any more. And that's all we're getting today. Do subscribe to my YouTube singing channel if you thought that was great. If not, here are the top 10 scary minions theories part two. Starting us off with number 10 is World Domination part one. Honestly, you don't even need to watch any of the movies to get this theory. You literally just have to watch the trailer of Minions. The Minions prime purpose is to serve a despicable master. That's why they were created. Sadly, their blips and foolishness tends to get a lot of their masters killed. Killed. But are they really accidents? I mean, they killed the T Rex, they killed Dracula, killed Napoleon. You'd honestly think they'd have learned their lesson by now, unless they were doing it on purpose. This theory suggests the minions don't really want to serve a despicable master, they want to kill their masters and achieve world domination. That's why they magically accidentally killed every master they've ever had. Because no damn accident, you guys. That's why. Don't underestimate these pesky little despicable yellows. Coming in at number 9 is World Domination Part 2. So we've already concluded that the little blobs are after world domination. But why do they then choose the most despicable masters to serve instead of just working on trying to take over the world themselves? I mean, they certainly have enough manpower, probably more than necessary. I feel like there's at least 300 Carls in there, like at least 300. Well, expanding on the previous theory, the minions are smart. Instead of doing all the labor themselves, they just outsource set to their master. They go after masters who are after world domination themselves because they've already invested their time and energy into formulating a domination plan, building whatever is needed for their plan, and knowing how to execute it. Now the minions are there low key helping the master with everything but high key just learning the ins and outs of their plan so they can use it if they deem it foolproof after they kill him of course. Despicable indeed. At number 8 we have the language barrier. Now whether we're talking despicable me or the minions movie itself, it's safe to say the minions speak in three ways. Ooh, ah, <laughs> and that's about all we get from them. But obviously the plot of the movie is quite easy to follow so we still know more or less what they're trying to say. On top of talking via weird noises, the minions seem a little dumb. Okay, let's be real, those yellow blobs are bloody dumb. This theory flips all the facts on their heads and claims that the minions are a lot smarter than we think. We need to think about it, they've literally been alive since dinosaurs, cavemen, Napoleon. They've been on Earth since Earth was a thing. Do you really think in all that time they never had a second to learn English? Of course they did. They probably know every language on Earth with all the time they've had to learn them all. The theory claims the minions actually know how to speak but choose to speak their own language to to fool their masters and everyone around them. The like little geniuses, just imagine how smart Edward Cullen was because he was around for so long. The minions were around for like a hundred times as long. Case and point. Filling our number 7 slot is them versus us. Now I know the minions are super cute and the movie itself is rated PG, but is it really as PG as we think it is? I mean the whole movie centers around them killing the Queen of England so Gru could become the King of England because being the King of England would somehow make him the ruler of the world. Full Pan grew. Either way, throughout their mission, we see the minions go through many hardships and obstacles, but what kind of gets brushed to the side is how many damn people they kill. Like, if you count, they kill about 59 people in the film, which is a lot more than several Jason Bourne movies put together. According to this theory, the minions need to kill in order to keep themselves going. I mean, they didn't have to kill 59 people, this isn't GTA. They could have easily just completed their mission without any bloodshed, or at least, you know, killed like two, three people. But no, no, they didn't even care about the kill count and that's because they needed it. Contrary to popular belief, it's not just bananas that fuel these little guys, it's human souls as well. Now at number 6 is the Minionizer. The Minions can't procreate. Firstly, I don't even know if they have any genitalia. Secondly, there are no female Minions, so there's just no option. So how the hell are there so many of them and their numbers just seem to just grow and grow?
Zero, taking inspiration from the Minions ride at Universal Studios theme park, the theory claims it's not that more Minions are being created somehow, the Minions are using the Minionizer, a ray gun like instrument to secretly turn humans into Minions. So forget all those theories about world domination, it's not that they're after, it's a world full of Minions. Wait, I'm, I'm sure that still counts as world domination. Coming in at number 5 is Bipolar Disorder. Now I think this theory is a bit tasteless since many people suffer from bipolar disorder and it's not to be joked about but the theory is what it is. I'm sure this stood out to a lot of people but on one hand the minions go around on their never ending mission to find the most evil villain out there and follow them to the ends of the earth. And on the other hand Bob is out here walking around with his teddy bear being cute as hell. Like how can they all be so despicably evil and despicably cute all at the same time? The theory claims that the one fatal flaw all the minions have is being bipolar. They go from being extremely cute to extremely evil to extremely clumsy multiple times every day. That's how they are, that's just how they were made. And just to put it out there, being bipolar definitely isn't a fatal flaw. Those are the theories words, not mine, just letting you know. At number 4 is the experiment that went wrong. In Despicable Me, Gru claims he created the minions by genetically modifying corn kettles, which I actually find hilarious, I completely forgot he even said that since I watched it so long ago, but they are little corn corns, I don't know. Either way, after they were created, Gru kind of realized that, hang on a minute, corn kettles aren't as intelligent as I thought they'd be once they're animated. Yeah, well, no sh grew. In an experiment attempting to increase their intelligence, he brings his three girls Margot, Edith and Agnes. Now the experiment involved the girls being in incubators with a minion each to see if the transfer of that part of their brains could be done. I mean he had no choice but to use the girls, who else would volunteer or even knows about the minions. The experiment was meant to sort of clone the brain matter and put it into the minions' brains, but Gru messed up his calculations Bad. Instead of giving them intelligence, Gru managed to turn the three girls into minions themselves. And there was the birth of Kevin, Stuart, and Bob. Kevin is super smart, he leads the other two, so Kevin was originally Margot. Stuart is obsessed with being cool and is very rebellious, and that's Edith to a T. Finally, we have Bob, who is the youngest, cutest member of the trio, and that was obviously Agnes. Filling out number three slot is Minions Propaganda. Now, according to the theory, the Minions movie wasn't really for us to watch and enjoy. As I previously stated in the fourth theory, Gru said he created the minions out of genetically modified corn kettles. Even though that explanation just got thrown out completely in the minions movie, according to that movie they've been around since forever even though that actually isn't true. This theory claims Gru created the minions movie himself as propaganda to show the minions. The film satisfies all the minions' curiosities about their purpose in life and why they came into being. In reality, it's Gru's way of telling the minions they exist only to serve him and that he is the greatest supervillain of all time so they picked a pretty good master. That's why he had to show them existing during dino times and the ice age to make their existence seem organic and not completely fabricated, which it is. Now at number 2 are their eyes. Does anyone kind of tell me why half the minions have two eyes and the other half are all cyclopses? Is that not sus to you guys? Well it seems sus to a lot of other people as well which is how this theory came into being. According to this one, when the minions were created, their purpose was clear, it was like ingrained in them. After waiting for evolution to happen and humans to come into being, they were getting more and more anxious about not being able to serve a master who wanted world domination. So the devil appeared before them because of course he's going to be their biggest ally, you know, creating havoc and world domination and all. The minions struck a deal with the devil who promised they would find a master who would successfully achieve world domination, but the condition was severe. For every 50 years the minions don't find a master and achieve their goal, one minion will lose an eye. And that won't stop when they're all cyclopses, no no, it'll keep going to the point none of them even have eyes if it has to. The mission must be completed otherwise we're looking at a lot of blind minions. The cyclopses present now represent how much time has passed since that ominous deal. And finally, at number 1 is the femicide. Now I'm sure I don't have to draw this to your attention, but have you noticed how all the minions are male? I know they don't show their genitalia on screen or anything, although I feel like even if they did, I feel like it would just be like a smooth, you know like a smooth. 
And it's not even that, all their names are typically male. There's Bob, Kevin, Stuart, Norbert, Carl. And I know these can be female names in our day and age, but the filmmaker himself actually confirmed all the minions are in fact male. So we heard it from the man himself. But where did the girls go? According to this theory, because of how clumsy and accidentally murderous the minions are, the theory says that when minions first came to existence, there were just as many girls as there were guys. They'd even get married, date each other, it was like a human world but for minions. But because of their critical clumsiness, each couple met the same fate. The male minion would somehow manage to kill the female minionette. I want to say minionette. <laughs> this started to happen more and more and more. I'm talking hundreds upon hundreds of deaths a day to the point it snowballed out of control and there were no girls left. Obviously with only guys, they couldn't procreate and have more girls even if they wanted and thus I present to you the most despicable act of all, femicide. Who knew that would get that dark? Certainly not me. And I wrote the video. And that's it for today's video, guys. This has been one of my favorite videos I've hosted to date. It was a lot of fun, and hopefully it was fun for you guys to watch as well. What do you guys think of all the theories? Do you think any of them have any backing? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, I'm your host, Eamon Hassan, and I'll see you next time. Banana! That's Minion for Bye, by the way. I speak it now.